I've had many mentors and they've really helped me. And in addition to having mentors, as one goes on an entrepreneur's journey, one needs to have people around you who you can rely upon. I've relied upon Clyde & Co since 1980 in the UK and also through their Middle Eastern practice run by a guy called Jonathan Silver, who's a great friend of mine. So I'm absolutely delighted to be here and welcome here, Jane. Thank you very much indeed. I'd also like to thank Christina Rubino. Where's Christina? Come on, put your hand up. <laughs> for organizing today with Nigel and the entire Mowgli team and family for being here as well with us this evening. I have this photograph up here because it actually it captures for me an essence. This was a program run recently in Jordan actually finished just about a week ago. And if you look at each individual person, you'll see one thing. They were all smiling. And that kind of brought the essence. They'd had a, a hard three days. The mentors were matched with the entrepreneurs, but they all were in a fantastic spirit to take it on. And so when I say that we live in really challenging times, we can only influence the future we cannot change the past. And we operate in both the UK and MENA. And I just want to share with you first of all about the MENA, because I want to put it in perspective. The Middle East and North Africa need to create 85 million new jobs in the next 10 years to keep the existing high unemployment rate the same. In the United States, in a good economical year, they're able to create three million jobs. Being a mathematician, over 10 years, they'll do well to get 30 million. So it begs the question, what's going to happen to the balance of 55 million? Well, there's two things they'll do. One is immigration, and Europe and the UK will be a major target for that immigration. And therefore, we have a vested interest in their success. The second option, is they live in poverty, their destitution, and I'll only leave it to your imagination which direction they'll take at that point in time. It is sobering. But the UK has a different but similar challenge. We have to generate wealth to meet the bank debt, to meet the government debt. And we hear about this figure of one trillion pounds let me put into perspective, if I include the bank bailouts, it's not one trillion pounds, it's 2.3 trillion pounds. Like okay. <laughs> Which is 148% of our GDP. So we need to get out of this debt and pay for our public services through generating wealth. And at the same time, we cannot risk our youth being a wasted generation. And currently we have over one million between the age of 18 and 24 unemployed. So I'd like you just to take you on a journey and I'll let you just reflect. And I want you to put yourself in the position of an 18 year old. And whether that 18 year old is in Newcastle in England or Ahmad Jordan. You've just finished school. You've just been through a real challenging period of teenage years and you're now in adulthood looking for a job. <coughs> in the UK, you've heard about the financial crisis, you've heard about the banking crisis, but what does it really mean for you? You're uncertain. You can see from the economy there's no growth. You walk down the high street and you see shops closing, you see pubs closing, you see a lot of boarded up shops and etc. And all, a lot of your friends are unemployed. Friends of your father. Unless we forget that joblessness increases depression, increases divorce rate, substance abuse, and basically everything else that can go wrong in your life. And in society, your parents or parent is finding it difficult to make ends meet. So how do you feel as an 18 year old? And what can we do to change this landscape? Not as a day trader, making a day trade once in a while, but something fundamental for the next generation. Not only for them, but also for the society we live in. For those of you who know me, I'm a passionate believer 
that entrepreneurs create good not in terms of the economy but also in terms of society. So what would it be like if we were to create a society with lots of entrepreneurs? We'd create wealth. And just remember that a typical entrepreneur takes less than 1% of the wealth he creates. 99% goes back into society in one shape or form, taxes, etc. He creates what I call economic regeneration because he's not going to set up a business in competition with a multinational or a large corporate. He has to find a new niche, so it has to be a new business. And yes, he will create, create employment. And the entrepreneur's journey is interesting because he then becomes a philanthropist. Not only has he made the money, he starts giving it back. But not only his money, he starts giving his time and his energy and his thought process. And finally, he believes passionately in social democracy, the right for every human being to have an opportunity. I just want to share one other aspect within the UK particularly, since we're here today. We have a major challenge with entrepreneurs because they get a company built up and between five and 25 million pounds, roughly, they bail out by selling it to a corporate. And the corporate takes that business and rather than creating another $500 million company out of it, they take that business and they change it from creativity to cost reduction. And then they try and consolidate by doing acquisition, but not creativity. And the cost reduction, by the way, comes in one form. They lay off people. So we have to encourage these entrepreneurs to go on to 500 million and find a way to do it. The United States have got it, and that's why you've got the Googles, the Facebooks, etc., working in their society. We need to create that here. And what do entrepreneurs need? They need a conducive environment comprising hope and aspiration. They need education, they need the skills to work forward. They need to have ecosystems for incubation because, as Michael Payton said very clearly, they have to risk failure. And a good entrepreneur has failed two or three times. He's the one you should back. They need finance and they need human capital. And it's within the human capital area that is where Mowgli was established to act as a catalyst to be part of that integral part of that conducive environment. So we put mentors and entrepreneurs together and as they go on the journey, the mentor provides the entrepreneur encouragement, because he always needs that. Enhances self-esteem, self-confidence. Again, just echoing what Michael Payton said, mitigating risk, help them mitigate that risk in their business, and in their personal lives, by the way. Mentors are a great source of learning. They really do help you learn. They tell you the truth when everyone else around you is placating you in some way. And they provide you with companionship as you go through the journey in the periods of darkness. And those darkness happen time and time again because the entrepreneur becomes a masochist as he goes through this journey and goes round and round again. For those of you who haven't mentored, the benefit for a mentor <coughs> is equal to that of an entrepreneur because they learn to serve others. They learn how to lead without control. They learn from the entrepreneur the importance of balance between personal and business issues and the way they can be integrated. And fundamentally, mentoring is at the core of talent development of human beings.